Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement with having. When someone is in struggle, how do you treat them? You see, there's a lot of people who want to treat someone in struggle as if they're a child. There's a lot of people who want to treat someone who's in struggle as if they're a game. And there's a lot of people who want to treat people in struggle as if they have lost their way or if they've become lame. And when I make these little silly rhymes, it's not about keeping a good time for you or for me or for any other, well, person. What it's about is teaching you how to be in a way that I don't have a right to, perhaps, for you and me. But what I'm saying to you is if you're listening, and if you're really truly listening, then you might understand some of the storylines. You see, the storylines of our life are what give us the life force we need to be everything we can be for our Lord. I talk a lot about being pagan, not at all, because I'm just one representative of being pagan. But what I do tell the truth on is the experiences that I've had since I became, well, say, blue, in the fact that a person in my family lied and stole something from me. It interfered with my entire life. It was a catalyst for not change, for strife. And when I say this, that person will probably deny it because it's always easy to deny the lie that someone else is telling, right? Because in life, we don't have a responsibility to protect our loved ones, do we? We only have a responsibility to screw them out of their lives. And then other people decided to play in and participate and to ruin a person's life. Total strangers thought it was funny to do something to someone. Ugly little children thought it was hilarious to do something to someone. And this evening, a homeless man was walking towards food. And a black player in a huge Dodge, what do they call it, power car, decided to peel out as if he was a part of the Indy 500 or, or, or Daytona 400, peel out his vehicle and practically hit the man in the street. It was clearly done intentionally. It was clearly done to startle me. But the saddest thing was that there was two black teenagers, a boy and a girl, who just thought it was a great hilarity. And sadly for the man, what he was basically proving was everything that I've been experiencing since I've gotten to this city. That there are players in the world who just don't have any pity, that there are players in the world who are pretty shitty, and that there are players in the world that don't really understand the way that satellites in the sky work to observe people who are about to be employed pretty high. In the life of a man, he has the right to achieve the highest position he can try to get in American society. The problem is that other people, in their jealousy, in their stupidity, and in their self-loathing and rage, will always try to interfere with someone who's trying to steer clear of difficulties and problems in life. When I make my play for my marketing business, I make it pretty high. Did anybody notice the alliteration that's going on pretty high? Or are you thinking that what I'm saying is pie in the sky? Did anyone pay attention to what I said in a previous video about how I tried to help clean house in the Democratic Party by writing a simple letter as simply a constituent in a city when I really had no home? But as every human being has a lawful right according to all the things we've been hearing in the news at night, that we have the right to electrify our life, we have the right to participate in elections, and we have the right to care about the political aspects of our family, of our society, and of our nation. What that means is that it is illegal to interfere with someone's right to vote. That happened to me when someone stole the power cord to my computer that the Lord led me to. I don't have that power cord anymore, but someone decided to trade it out in front of a Korean food store and literally steal my good cord and ruin it by putting their dead cord with me. What that meant was that I didn't get a chance to vote this year, and I'm pretty upset about it. And that actually is an illegal act. But most people don't remember that. Additionally, I've had people who have illegally and immorally tainted food that has left me gone and out of my ability to be conscious for a good three days and put me in a bad mood. And every time I get played at by some person that I don't ever really have any intention of meeting greeting or participating in their life, 
I sit there and I look at these people and I go, I'm sorry, why don't you just do your life? But apparently someone who's new, who's different, who's kind, who's thoughtful, who tries to make sure people have something to eat, is a target for people who like to play panhandling and other mean games in the street. When I make a rhyme, it's because God finds it funny, or God finds it witty, or God finds it in entirely, I don't know, shitty. But the point is that when I'm talking as a pagan, I'm only representing me. I'm not representing my future wife. I'm not representing my future family friend. I'm not representing any other pagan in any other land. I'm representing me. But what I try and put forth is content that makes you think, that makes you wonder, and that makes you think about your own life. Because if you're too busy thinking about my life, about what you're going to do to me, how you're going to harm me, how you're going to take from me, how you're going to steal from me, God is looking down from heaven, whatever you believe in the architectural of all divinity and all, well, creativity and all life, and going, what the hell do you think you're doing with my children in the night? You see, it is an abuse to take someone's clothes off without their permission. It's actually federally illegal, but police and other people like to play games like that. We have immoral people in our society ruining the races, the nations, and the creeds that other people experience. I made a pretty good video on my phone earlier today, but someone was immorally hacking me down by a way that I've been using successfully to move my life forward. They prevented its upload. That person in the store is actually committing a federal offense called cybercrime, identity theft, and, well, a version of fraud. That player's car has still been in the parking lot late at night, and you sit there and wonder, go, last time I checked, you're not the manager of that store. At the same time, there are other people who forget their boundaries. I was actually played with this evening by an alleged manager of a Best Buy store. Last year, there was a girl there who was really kind and a supervisor and helped me a lot. And openly, she also played in a game on me, I believe, and she had to trot. But if I make these silly rhymes, it's to remind you of who you are today. Something that has been powerful for me to say is the truth. The truth that will set you free. The rest of the story about the black, by, black best by person, and he wasn't black, I'm sorry, I just had a mumble, and my words got all jumbled was he wrote up to me and said, what's your story, or something like that. And I basically said, I'm sorry, who are you to me? You see, total strangers see a person who's in struggle or is homeless or is literally having some health issues or you need to just sit down to think about things and get out of the heat, and they just want to play with them. And what God said to me before he got, before that man drove up on me was, don't talk to him, don't play with him. And I was absolutely right. And it wasn't me who was right. It was God who was absolutely right. Speaking through the Holy Ghost, which is a privilege, an honor that any Christian, any pagan, any Wiccan knows exists. Because it's talked about in almost every text that we have. From around the world to around the globe to our own hearts and our own home, we are promised that from the house of the Lord. But that man decided to play and, and insult me for a while. And then he decided to tell me that he was actually the manager of the store. His mistake was how he approached me. And then he played the little sales takeaway. Well, I was planning to give you some money. Do you know how many fucking times I've heard that over the last year? After someone has been incredibly rude to my ears? Almost every time from a white man. I'm sorry. I'm not interested in your funds. Because the way you've approached me is so rude to me and to the Lord in heaven, it's not even funny. And when I say this, the people who have no God and are so selfish and are so odd won't understand this. But if you're a person of faith like me, if you're a person of spirituality, if you're a person who loves reading religious books like me, then you're going to be offended like me. You see, what his idea was that he would introduce who he was at the end of his introduction but at the same time, he was misrepresenting his company because I doubt it was his company that was putting the money, whatever he was flashing in front of me, that he was allegedly going to give me. But I, according to my behavior with him, he wasn't going to give me anymore. You see, the loving and kind people, regardless of their faith, and even those who have no faith, usually don't play that way. 
they usually just roll up and say, hey, you might be in struggle today. I'd like you to give you this so you have some food today. Then I had someone earlier in the day who tried to give me a paltry four dollars. She expressed she was Catholic, so I wasn't the least bit shocked. They are the most, how should I say it, ungenerous people I've ever met. I even had a Catholic player in the campus lot who literally threw his pizza at my head when I said, no thank you, I've already eaten, I don't need this. He wouldn't, wasn't willing to take my no for an answer. And I thought, wow, a young man who is barely old enough to pull up his britches correctly has never produced a life with a wife, a son, a business, a volunteer organization, an educational organization, worked for a college, worked for a university, and openly was well trusted in his home and community, is trying to insult me for what I'm experiencing right now due to all the things I've been through. Can you believe that clown? You see, to most people in my affluent and influential community, which this has a great potential to be because it's got all the retail shops almost, except for maybe half price books, that my community of about 10 to 15 times larger did. But the difference is the level of generosity, I think. The difference is maybe the letter of edu level of education, perhaps. But I'm not touting anything arrogant. I'm simply listing demographical, factual information. But the difference is that a person who's loving and kind will give a di gift of donation and not expect one thing in return or in kind. I sometimes am told by the Lord of, you know that thing that you found, you know that thing that you bought, you know that thing, please give it to them because they need to be rewarded for making an effort for you today. And that thing that you picked up is really for them, but God didn't tell me that because I hadn't met them yet. In the terms of the things that I make for crafts, it's amazing how many people have stolen the things that God had set aside through me to give to people who might become to get to know me. You see, in life we have moments of time to show our ass to the Lord. And if you don't get on your knees every morning to thank your Lord, whatever that may be, that you still have a life and you've woken up and you've got your eyes to see and your hands to work and your feet to carry you, then maybe you don't understand the blessings of human life. But all human lives matter to the Lord. Every single human being, according to Christians, can be saved. The woman who was the most disrespectful to me a few weeks ago literally was driving off in a baby voice tone saying, Jesus loves you. And I thought, with the way you've just disrespected me at my age, with the way that you've tried to play with me for your police friends, I don't believe anything a Christian will ever say, and all you've done is totally validated what I've experienced. But the truth is in life that if we're trying to be different in life, we have the right to be that difference. And the truth in his life, if I get this position I'm vying for, then I get out of my difficulty. But can you imagine? There's total strangers who don't know me, who just don't think I have a right to achieve what I can achieve. And I'm thinking, is this not America? Is this not where we talk about the home of the brave, the land of the free, and the rights to opportunity? And if you're not pleased with your life, by all means, focus on your life, learn something for your life, educate your life, upgrade your life, and find what you need for you, not me.